from your kind of background, it's impossible to rise again. You are rising again. We're taking our message from John chapter 6. We read 1 to 12. John 6, 1 to 12. I'll read 1, you'll read 2. After this, since Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee with the Sea of Tiberias. you read verse 2. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. You read verse 3. And when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great multitude come unto him, he said unto Philip, Where shall we buy bread that this may eat? And Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. There's a lad here which have five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed the disciples, and disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. Shall we read 12 together finally? Shout hallelujah. Praise is simply exalting and magnifying God for who he is. And what he has done in words, clapping, songs, and dancing. And what praise is. You're exalting him, you're magnifying him for who he is. And what he has done in words, in songs, and clapping, and in dancing. While prayer is simply asking God to intervene on your behalf in a given situation on the basis of his word and your relationship with him. So praise for answered prayers is magnifying God in words, songs, clapping, dancing, and asking him to intervene in your favor in a given situation. In a given what? Situation. What to do in praise to get answers. What to do in praise to get answers from God. Not just answers. From God. From who? From God. What to do in praise to get answers from God. Look at verse 5. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes. And saw a great multitude. They said what? They were in the wilderness and then crowd came. Crowd did what? Where there was no food to feed them. It was 100% man and 100% God. So everything that challenged you also challenged him. He turned to Philip and said, is there any way we can feed these people? Jesus was faced with challenges in feeding the thousands of people in the wilderness, excluding women and children. 5,000 was only men, so just imagine women and children. You know the thousands of people that were available, yet there was no food to feed them. So number one, focus on God. Number one, do what? Focus on God based on verse 5. In Psalm 34, verse 5, it said, They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Instead of focusing on your challenge, situation, circumstance before you, 
focus on God. Focus on who? Jesus had a challenge. He didn't focus on the challenge. He focused on his father. In most cases, hear this truth? People turn their eyes from God when faced with challenges. It happened to Peter when he was walking on water and the boisterous wind came. He turned his eyes away from God, Jesus, and focused on the boisterous wind. In Matthew 14, 25 to 31, he took his face away. Hear this and hear me well. God is too big for any situation to harass him. He said, I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Jeremiah 32, verse 27. And verse 17, he said, there's nothing too hard for God. Say nothing. Say it one more time. It's too hard for my God. It's too big to be harassed by any circumstance. And I know today it will intervene concerning you. Shout amen where you are. No situation can intimidate him. Yes, you're going through challenges, but focus on God. You know, it's easy to talk tough when things are not happening. But when you're face to face with challenge, that's when you know whether you're focusing on the problem or you're focusing on God. Because every problem, there's a promise of God to handle it. And today, God's promises will work in someone's favor. We are not denying the fact that you have problems, but the truth remains. God is equal to the challenge. Let me show you something in the book of Numbers, chapter 21, 8 to 9. Numbers 21, 8 to 9. There was a problem in the wilderness. The children of Israel experienced a very strange problem. But I'm going to show you something from God's word. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fairy serpent and set it upon a pole. Then shall come to pass that everyone that is bidden, when he looked upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put upon a pole. And it came to pass, if a serpent had beaten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Now, in the wilderness, let me use modern language, serpents are snakes. They were attacking people in the wilderness. And God said to Moses, anyone attacked by the serpent, if you go to anywhere in the world, the medical sign, you see a pole and a serpent. Even if you are getting to an hospital, you see, they put a pole on the serpent. That's, they took it from the Bible. Even those who don't believe God, who are sinners, who say, I don't believe in God. I'm a medical doctor. The sign there is from the Bible. That's where it came from. That's where they got that logo from. If you go to any hospital in the United Nations, one head organization, you see the serpent on the pole. They are saying, we treat, but look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, what the Bible is saying here is very simple. It's saying that, look, yes, you may have a challenge, but don't look at the challenge, look at Jesus. In John 3, 14 and 15, he said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so much the Son of Man be lifted up. Are you there? That whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have what? Eternal life. And we all know Jesus is the word of God. John 1, 1. So God is saying, look, it doesn't matter what is happening. Even if you are beaten, even if things are hard, don't look at this situation Look at Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. And with Jesus, the word of God. With Jesus. He said, even if today, anything, even if cancer is on somebody, don't look at the cancer. Look at the word. If there be any problem anywhere in the world, he said, don't look at the problem. Look at what? The word. Put your focus on the word. Yes, you have challenges, no doubt. But don't look at the challenges. Look at the word. And today as you focus on God's word, your testimony will be born. You don't praise God focusing on your problems. The praise won't flow. Divine intervention is for those who focus on God and his word. Any focus on God attracts his full attention. Let me say this to you. God is a loving father. So I have a loving father. 
Say it one more time. In Jeremiah 31 verse 3. The Lord had appeared of old unto me saying, Yea, look at what the Bible. Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. He said, I have loved thee. So Satan cannot stop God from loving you. Hello. Satan cannot stop God from hearing you. And Satan cannot stop God from responding to you. That's what God said to you. I repeat, Satan cannot stop God from what? It's too late. He said, I have loved you. It's, it's, so it's a loving father. Have an accurate picture of your father God. Know the limitations of the devil. Don't magnify him. He refuse to magnify your problems. God will use your problems to reveal his power and majesty in this service. Shout aloud, amen. Because it's not the dancing, it's your focus that matters. You can praise God and praise and not get the results if your focus is on your problems. Is that what God was saying here? Yeah? I'll show you an example in the Bible. Two persons were before a sin, Martha and Jesus. When Lazarus died, Martha said something in John chapter 11, in verse 39, I will show you 39 matters focus and 40 Jesus focus. Jesus said, take away the stone. Matters, the sister of you that was dead, seeth unto him. See our focus. Look at our focus. Lord, by this time, he stinketh, for he had been dead. For the, our focus was on the stinking situation of who? Lazarus. Do you understand our focus now? Now look at verse 40, Jesus focus. Jesus saith unto her, said I not unto thee, if thou wouldest believe, thou shalt see the glory of God. Jesus focus on the glory of God, matter focus on the stinking of Lazarus. That's how many of us. Oh, but the problems I have, they are too much. What are you focusing on? Problems. I know God is able on God. Make your choice. You don't have a neutral ground. You're either focusing on the problem or you're focusing on the promises. Stay tuned. David Abume will be right back. What the human race would be like without social interactions. No talking, no communication, just everyone leading a solitary life. Now visualize a world where love forms the basis of interactions. Shared laughter, memories and value. Salvation Ministries introduces Get a Connect, a fast, convenient and simple way to communicate with those whom you love. Keep in touch with friends and family, connect with your colleagues and business partners, stay updated on latest information and trends. Your social network's all in one. Head over to Google Play Store or App Store to download. Also available on the web at www.getaconnect.com. Get a connect, spreading love and value through words. Welcome to our salvation with David Ibiomi. Just praise God and see what He will do. We all know the story. That he said, Father, what? I thank you because thou hast heard me. And we all know Lazarus came forth. Today, every death situation will rise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Expect the miraculous power of God to become obvious in your life after this praise. You know what God said? The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Luke 18 verse 27. The things, not things, things including your own. The things, and he said, the things which are impossible. Is there any situation that you think is impossible? Today, God will turn it around in the name of Jesus. So praise God by redirecting your focus to be on God and not on the challenges you're going through. The problem will clear. As you move God to manifest in your favor with praise, shout a loud amen. amen. Shout a loud amen. amen. Shout the loudness of all amen. amen. We have read in John chapter 11. I'll read 41 to 44 for better understanding. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Joe lifted up his eyes and said, Father, what? I thank you. 
that thou hast what? He praised God when Lazarus was still in the grave. See where our focus is powerful? He didn't say thank you when Lazarus came out. They thanked him before he came out. So you are not praising God only when he's done. You praise God for the thing to be done. Most times it's easy to say, Father, I thank you when something has done happened. But to thank God when you have not seen it is more powerful. It's more what? Don't praise him today based on what you have seen. Praise him for what you want to see. Don't tell God, I thank you, mighty God, because of the car you bought. Thank him because you are still tracking and you know you get a car. Don't thank him because your body is already healed. Thank him because you know your body will be healed. Don't just thank him until you have seen the appointment. Thank him because the appointment will come. Don't thank him because things are beginning to work. Thank him for things will begin to work. So here, focus on him. Let me show you something. And I knew that that yes, we always, but because of the people we stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou had what? Sent me. And when he thought I had spoken, he cried with a loud voice. Lazarus, come forth. Whatever is dead in your life will come forth in this first service. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Two things. One, it was a bonded. Two, he had no vision. Anytime your eyes are cl closed, no vision. No what? No direction. But the day prays, we give you clarity of vision of what needs to do in your life. Wherever you have been bound, where you cannot move forward, you will move forward after this praise. Amen. Jesus said unto them, lose him and let him go. Wherever you have been bound, you will be loose right now. Amen. I say you will be loose right now. Amen. Tell us I will praise God. And I will see the wonders of God in my life. I will praise him because I will experience the wonders of God. In my life. Shout a better amen. amen. Shout a loud amen. amen. Expect the miraculous power of God. It will be very visible in your life. Let me show you something. If you want that problem to clear. And move God to manifest in your favor. Then praise him with understanding. In Psalm 114. I'll read 1 to 7. Psalm 114. Are you focusing on God? How many will focus on God? How many will focus on God? Tell yourself, I'll turn my eyes away from the problems. And I will focus on the most high God. Who will take care of the problems. Serpents beat them in the wilderness. But he said, anyone that focus on the brazen serpent. On the poor shall live. Shall what? They were beaten. But he said, anyone that is able to take his eyes off the serpent bite and focus on the brazen serpent, will live. Those who turn their eyes away from the brazen serpent and focus on the problem, they died. You see the difference? In the wilderness. All those who turn their eyes and said, yes, and looked on the brazen serpent, they lived. All those who began to look on the snake bite, they what? They died. It depends on what you're focusing on. So every time you go to the hospital, he said, they treat me, but I'm focusing on Jesus, the altar and the finisher of my faith. That is how his name, every knee will bow. The logo was taken from where? The Bible. In Psalm 114, how many will focus on God? He said, when Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of what? Straight language. Judah means praise. Was a sanctuary and Israel is dominion. He said, The sea saw it and fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains skipped like around. Mountains represents obstacles. Mountains represents what? Obstacles. And little hills like lambs. They were jumping out. He said, What hell thee, O that sea that are fled us? That Jordan that was driven back. The psalmist is asking the question. He said, what really made the sea and the mountains to clear? He said, you mountains, you skip like lambs, and you do hills like lambs. Look at verse 7 carefully. He said, tremble thou earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. He said, the reason why all the obstacles cleared is because of the presence of God. 
And if you want to provoke the manifestation of his presence, the easiest and the quickest one is praise. Is what? God is with you. But if you want him to manifest, praise him. It doesn't go on transfer. It's with you. But if you want him to act, praise him. So the psalmist said, how come all these things are just going off one after the other? Is it because of the presence of God? So how do I provoke his presence to manifest? Praise. How do I do it? Praise. I look unto him and say, Lord, step in, in this situation and things will turn. Shout a better amen. amen. Shout a loud amen. amen. Shout a bigger amen. amen. Today, his presence will clear every, every obstacle in your life. Amen. God heard the prayers of Jesus because of something he did. Why did God hear his prayers? Because we are praising for answered what? There was something Jesus did. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, not some things, everything including the thing that is holding you now. By prayer and what? Supplication with thanksgiving. So if there's no praise connected with all your prayer requests, it end up as protest. Jesus prayed for Lazarus and said, Father, I do what? Thank you. He praised him. When it was the loaves, with the challenge, he did what? He praised him. In the two incidents, John 6 and John 11, there was major praise. It's easy to talk when you are not faced with challenge. To praise God when you're faced with challenge. Landlord gave you quick notice. You now say, Father, I thank you. Ah. That's why you say, Father, are you still in heaven? You know, it's easy to talk tough. You will know whether you understand scriptures when you're faced with challenge. So God is saying, turn your eyes away from the challenge. Now focus on me. And when you focus on God, things will turn. Things will turn this hour in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, in the two cases, did not focus on the circumstances. He focused on his father. He said, let your request be made known. With what? Thanksgiving. With what? Let your request be made known to God. He said, be careful for nothing. But in everything, everything, so no matter how small it is, by prayer and what? Wheat. That means if task given is not with it, forget it. It's like posting a letter without a stamp. You have written a wonderful letter. It has address, but no stamp on it. You want to send an email without an email address. We go? It will not go. No thanksgiving, your request will not move. Yes, you have a good mail you have written, but the email address is the thanksgiving. The stamp is the thanksgiving. Otherwise, the letter will go nowhere. Even if it has an address. Is that what God is saying? So our prayers we have prayed. Now we are praising God. The praise is a stamp and email address. So I hear. That was what Jesus did. In John chapter 6. And in John chapter 11. He focused on his father. Not on the same problems. So I will do the same. Say it one more time. Say it like a child of God. We are not praising God today to entertain him. I got a deep revelation. In 24 hours, they entertain him in heaven. The angels say, holy, holy, holy. So if it's entertainment alone, he has the best instrument, more than the one we have in church. Today, we are praising him for him to intervene. We are praising God to intervene. To do what? Are you getting what I'm saying? 
in that given situation of your life, you are saying, God, this area of my life intervene today. I want you to intervene. You focus on that particular area of your life. I say, Lord, this area intervene today. And with thanksgiving, not looking at the problem, or looking at who? God. Is that true? You are not looking at the problem. Understand the praise. You are looking at who? You are focusing on God to intervene in that situation. You are not focusing on the situation like matter. You are focusing on God to what? You are God's most prized possession. Your worth to Him is incomparable. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Not the sin, not the pain, not your shame. Jesus says, All that the Father giveth to me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will no wise cast out. John chapter 6 verse 37 God is waiting for you with open arms. Come to him as you are. He will give you life, freedom, peace, transformation. Wherever you are, pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from the dead to save me. Now with my mouth, I declare you Lord over my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name. They worship together regularly at the temple each day. Met in small groups in homes for communion and shared meals with great joy and thankfulness. Acts 2, 4-6 In your daily pursuit of a fulfilling life, you need the support of a spiritual family. A heaven where you can enjoy spiritual comforts, a brook where you can be refreshed with God's word, and a military backup for fellow soldiers in Christ. Enjoy these and much more in the Cell Fellowship, designed as a close-knit setting for your personal revival, growth, and blessings. It exists in three structures, the Home Cell Fellowship, which is suited for everyone, the Corporate Cell Fellowship, which is convenient for corporate offices and organizations, and the Unique Cell Fellowship, which is made for students. No matter your preference, there is a place for you. Locate the nearest Cell Fellowship Center to you and begin reaping the benefits today. Imagine what the human race would be like without social interactions. No talking, no communication, just everyone leading a solitary life. Now visualize a world where love forms the basis of interactions. Shared laughter, memories and value. Salvation Ministries introduces Get a Connect, a fast, convenient and simple way to communicate with those whom you love. Keep in touch with friends and family, connect with your colleagues and business partners, stay updated on latest information and trends. Your social networks all in one. Head over to Google Play Store or App Store to download. Also available on the web at www.getaconnect.com. Get a connect, spreading love and value through words. Join us next time on Our Salvation with David Iyomi. This message was brought to you by Salvation Ministries, home of success.